2020 has been an incredible year. We've faced so many challenges, both from a healthcare crisis globally with COVID-19, as well as market volatility. Investors were challenged throughout the entire year to come up with a forecast that could not be relatable based on any historical experience. At no time have we ever had government shut down productivity and economic activity to the level that we're seeing today. Therefore, it's important when we look forward to think about some of the positives, but before we do that, let's look back. In early 2020, when the market became very clearly defined by the fact that the pandemic was going to hit economic progress, all asset classes, especially risk assets, performed very poorly for a short period of time, and that's the most critical. Because of several factors, the market bounced back incredibly fast because the economic activity was not going to be hindered as much as expected. Therefore, corporate earnings for many different industries were actually going to be moving forward at a quicker pace than expected. Therefore, the combination of fiscal and federal policy, the Federal Reserve in the United States act quickly and rapidly, learning from all of the activities and, and uh, reactions to economic crisis in the past and put all of that into motion very, very quickly. Also, there was a federal response and hundreds of billions of dollars were put into place to help businesses get through that. Because of that, there's been an incredible rebound in large cap equities in the United States, specifically growth equities. Many of those businesses actually prospered. There are many companies that are household names today, certainly in the United States, that have become winners and have actually earned more than expected without the pandemic, actually more than expected for 2020 when compared to analysis done in 2019. When we look at asset class performance, the convertible market has been extremely well positioned, not just because of its risk reward aspects of the asset class, but also more importantly, because of the fact that the investable securities within that were aligned very closely with the companies that could do well in this environment. Both credit markets and equity markets reacted differently, but in harmony with one another. In other words, the high yield market in the US rebounded with stocks. Large cap equities, as mentioned a moment ago, performed very well. As we look backwards and we think about the speed in which the market responded, it is very likely that we can take 2020 third quarter earnings as a representative case. Amazingly, with the visibility that analysts had just in this last reported quarter, earnings expectations were beat by 85% of the companies. Revenue expectations were beaten by approximately 75% of the companies. In other words, expectations for the impact for both the pandemic and the economic challenges that the, we faced in the United States were much more um, grave or negative than they actually were. And that actually is represented in the 2020 third quarter earnings that were much better than expected where analysts actually had very good visibility. So when we look to specific elements of that, we can focus not just on the returns, but look at industries like housing. We are still to this day getting extremely strong housing numbers. That would be unexpected in an environment where consumers were not excited about the prospects going forward. There has been a shift in what people want to have for their lifestyle. They've been innovative, they've been able to work from home, but they may want a different environment for that innovation. And therefore, there's been quite a bit of movement that is unexpected and very, very strong in housing. The consumer in general has been extremely resilient. And because of the federal policy, because of the fiscal policy, because the economic recovery has actually been more V-shaped, this has allowed consumers to be much more active more quickly. The employment figures we were seeing in the early end of first quarter, early second quarter, rebounded miraculously quickly. Therefore, the consumer ex expectations 
were more positive and there was more spending, whether that be online or in stores or it be for household goods, these are all things that are linked to the rapid recovery that we've seen. One thing that was not mentioned earlier in my points is that the other asset classes, meaning fixed income asset classes, specifically government bonds, have been very difficult to invest in because of the overall lack of yield. And whether you look at the U.S. or outside of the U.S., that is something that's been a big challenge. Therefore, the income producing activities within income and growth, within high yield, within converts, within equity, have been powerful from the standpoint of being able to deliver the investor both an income stream that is higher than you can achieve in normal bond funds, but also a capital gain that exceeds that. So participating and protecting, it's been a very strong year for 2020. Non-Lut Tao Zi.